All right, everybody. So today we're going to be doing our first group member interview with Justin Vegan Savage. And um, Justin has lost how much? How much did you end up losing total? As of today, I've lost two hundred and four pounds. <laughs> two hundred and four pounds. So he is the. Uh, I don't. I, I hate saying this, but it just makes sense. The biggest loser so far. <laughs> <laughs> John John uh, started us off, kicked us off with 100 pounds, and then Steve came through with 130 pounds. I think he might be at like 150 now. But now Justin has uh, put an extra 50 on top of that, and now he's at 204. So I'm really excited. You know, obviously we've been speaking about this for a while, uh, right. getting this interview done. And um, I just want to kind of start at the beginning, you know, like what – what was it that started you on your health journey? Uh, what are some of the things that you've tried, like, to lose weight and get healthy? Okay, so um, the first thing that started me off, that initially started me off and I didn't drop the ball this time was, I'll never forget, um, my, a lot of people have been telling me I needed to lose weight from my father, my mother, family members, all that kind of stuff. And I was just like, okay, yeah, whatever. But um, my granddad, actually, I used to visit him in Columbia all the time, and he would be like, um, one day we was talking, he was like, son, it don't make no sense for you to be like 400 pounds. And I looked at him, I was like, that hurts. <laughs> he was like, you really need to lose weight. And he said, you um, are too young to be the size that you are. He was like, you, you, you just, it, it doesn't need to happen. And then he was like, um, he said that I had took a nap at his house and he was like, you alarmed the whole house. You were snoring the roof off the house. Wow. Um, like, my grandmother was concerned because I had stopped breathing or something. I didn't know that I had stopped breathing, but like she was alone because I had stopped breathing. So from that point on, it was like an eye opener. When I got home from my visit with my grandparents, um, my mother, like I went to sleep. My mother came in my room just shaking me, shaking me, shaking me. And I looked at her like, what's your problem? She was like, you had stopped breathing. She was like, I know you had stopped breathing because you stopped snoring. And I was like, oh, shoot. Wow. So that, like immediately the next day, I went and joined the gym. Um, I started doing like light cardio, walking. Um, didn't do any weight training for a few months. Just started walking. Um, I started feeling better after I started walking. But um, even before then, my joints were hurting. I would um, doing heavy breathing. Like I have a most of the time, I have a desk job. Heavy sitting at my uh, desk and just lose my breath. Right. Breath, um, borderline diabetic, blood pressure. My blood pressure had been up ever since I was 14 when I was diagnosed with high blood pressure. But the older I got, it was seemed like the worse it got. A normal day for me with my blood pressure would be 190 something over 130 something. It was just weird. Um, I pretty much lived in Strokesville wow. all the time. So I like, okay, I need to knuckle this down and really, you know, change my dynamic of my health. So I started, you know, going to the gym, working out, going walking. I started off walking like a, probably about for an hour, inclined walking on the treadmill, just walking. Um, then I started researching YouTube to see like what else I needed to do as far as like gain, keeping muscle mass and, you know, losing weight, but keeping muscle mass because I didn't want to be flabby and all that kind of stuff. Right. Um, so I started that and then I, encounter what was called fasting. Now, the water fast thing to me is very new, but I've been dry fasting all the time uh, once I really started getting serious about my weight loss. And I started that path and it was like the weight started coming off like drastically. The first time I did a three day dry fast and I dropped 14 pounds in just those three days. Um, wow. then the longest one, it was a seven day um, dry fast and I dropped 38 pounds in just a matter of those seven days. So um, with that, I probably should not have, but you know, I still went walking on those days that I was dry fasting and was still trying to be active until like day five, six, seven, I just couldn't do much of anything because my energy was gone. Right. But, for the first four days of my dry fasting experience, I did my walking and all that kind of stuff, and it clearly paid off in the end with that. 
So um, I've tried different diets, low carb diets. Um, the Atkins diet was a big thing. Right. And I would gain all of that weight back. Plus, um, um, I had got up to a size 56 in pants, a 5X in a shirt. Um, it was just ridiculous. So, yeah. That's incredible. Like, you know what? Like, I didn't expect. So you started off dry fasting and then water fasting was something you experienced later on. Water fasting, I didn't experience until I came across your YouTube channel. Um, oh, wow. This year. So I've never known anything about water fasting whatsoever. So, so like, so YouTube, where did you find out about dry fasting? Like, where did you get that from? I can't remember who it was. Um, I think it was a guy, he talks about the snake diet all the time or something like that, and he was talking about dry fasting. Okay. Um, and I was like, oh, okay, well, this is interesting, so I'm going <laughs> to try. But I saw a lot of people, um, you know, on YouTube. He just sticks out of my mind a lot. But um, I saw a lot of people on YouTube that talked about dry fasting and the effects and how it speeds up um, a lot of your cell restoration and different things of that nature. Right. So, um, I was like, okay, but yeah, it was just this year when I found out about water fasting, and actually, it was the video of your brother Stephen, I believe, um, when they talked about him losing all that weight and um, curing, not curing diabetes, but he no longer has diabetes. Um, yeah. From yeah, well, Steve, uh, Steve uh, had undiagnosed diabetes. John was uh, had pre-diabetes, but okay. you know, it's the, my thing is if you've got pre-diabetes, then you've got diabetes. It's just a, it's a number. It's like, for example, like. Um, if you go to Canada, let's say you're in America and they say, oh, yeah, you have diabetes. You go to Canada and then they say you don't have diabetes because the num it just deter it's determined by a number. But he had all the symptoms of diabetes. Um, you know, actually, he had more symptoms than Steve did, uh, which is weird. But um, that's 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 cool, man. Like uh, dry fasting, something that I'm actually going to be trying for the first time myself uh, this summer. And I'll be, I'll be actually, uh, it'll either be in July when I do dry fasting or the end of June. But I wanna, I wanna, I'm gonna start a whole bunch of different detox therapies and cleansing therapies this summer. And I'm gonna be uh, easing my way into dry fasting. I'm actually looking to like really push it. Like I'm gonna be dry okay. fasting, going to work, you know, like uh, it's summertime, it's gonna be hot. Cause I wanna see, you know, how, how safe is it to do uh, long-term under stress? And um, that way, you know, people have like a, a benchmark because a lot of people are afraid of dry fasting for some reason. So the, the longest dry fast you did was seven days, right? Seven days. So like, what are, what are did you experience anything uh, unusual besides just the weight loss do you recall like anything unusual? I know for me, like when I started uh, fasting or just getting healthy, I started dreaming every night again. Um, you know, just just my 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 mood changed. I mean, what are some of the things you experienced? Well, in the first, I would say the first forty hours, because um, I'm normally always a happy person. Um, but within the first forty eight hours, I was in the worst mood. I mean, <laughs> But it, it was like the Incredible Hulk had come out of me or something. Um, it, it was crazy. Um, so that happened. And then I started getting like weird skin rashes by day three, four. And then by five, I started craving stuff that I never really cared to eat. Yeah. So it was just pretty much anything that I could think of that I wanted to eat was what I was craving. And the weird thing is, with the way my diet was set up before now, um, a typical week for me, um, lunchtime, Chinese buffet, every day, like they knew what I wanted to drink, where I wanted to sit, they knew me by name, it was crazy. Um, <laughs> <laughs> dinner time was um, Japanese or pizza. And literally, I would order a large pizza, 16 wings, and a two-liter um, Mountain Dew and eat the whole thing by myself. Um, 
by the time I started the dry fasting experience, I was craving like weird stuff like macaroni and cheese and um, like high carb type stuff. Um, it, it was just weird. Um, Oreos and like sweet stuff, jelly beans. I hate jelly beans, but I wanted jelly beans. Um, all kind of, you're just weird. Um, I was just craving all kind of stuff. And then by six and seven was, um, it was like, old relationships and old friendships that I had back in high school and the bullying that I went through in high school um, really was something I ended up having to deal with mentally and internally. Um, so it was just really interesting. Um, that never happened to me before I did dry fasting. I was pretty much, you know, smooth sailing in a good mood all the time. But day one and two, I was in terrible moods, three and four, three, four, you know, um, craving all kind of stuff, five, six and seven. Um, dealing with you know high school trauma, I guess. Yeah, which is really interesting. Yeah, that that's man, that's dope because uh, that's very similar to the experiences I had and my brothers had, and a lot of people have. Um, but you had it at an accelerated rate, which is which is ex exactly what you would expect from a dry fast because typically you tend to see things happen about two or three times faster on a dry fast. Right. So. For for me, typically when I when I'm talking to people about you know what they're going to experience and when, if they're doing a water fast, usually I'll say, hey, around day ten you may start ex experiencing some of the emotional uh, release, um, right. which you know I guess for you it seemed to happen around seven day seven or so, right. and um, the the cravings thing I always I always thought that was weird because. Like when I when I went through my fast, I was craving like sloppy Joe and stuff I hadn't had for decades. And it was so <laughs> weird. You know what I mean? And like it's it's cool because it's like confirmation that what what's happening is typical. And there is uh, there's a process to it that everybody's body kind of goes through. Right. And um, I don't know. I just I feel like it's just good to get confirmation because like. My brothers, they, they experience similar, similar things. And, you know, my friends, they experience similar things. But I don't, I don't really get people that do, like, like really long-term fasts. Like, people tend to want to do less than 10 days, maybe seven, five days. All right. So, you know, it's, it's cool hearing somebody else who's done some, some long-term dry fasting say these things because it, it just really solidifies, you know, what I've been learning. Exactly. Um, did you, did you, uh, with your rashes, I'm just curious, like that, that happened pretty fast. Like people experienced some really bad rashes. Uh, did it, did it cover your entire body? Was it just like on your arms? Were they like pimples or acne or was it more like peeling? Like describe it for me. It was, um, like red, it was very red and like maybe pimples on the inside of the red spots. It, I've never seen anything like that. Mm. Um, and it was like on my chest. I had it on my, um, the inside of my arms, on my legs, by it was just different spots. Um, I had one in the middle of my back. Mm. It's weird. Um, I, yeah. <laughs> How long did they last? Um, so the rashes came around day three, four, anywhere between day three and five. Um, I can't remember the actual time period. But by the end of my fast, and I can't even remember when they dissipated, okay. by the end of my um, Okay. Okay. Because, like, man, I get, I get, that's, people freak out about those. Um, you know, people get them, get them coming all the way up their body, crawling up their neck and into their face and, I've had so many people that are like, oh, I'm going to run to the doctor or they'll, they'll post on a group and they'll be like, oh, you know, I got these really bad rashes. I'm going to go to the doctor. He gave me cortisol. He gave me steroids. And I'm just like, oh, my God, like you guys don't get it. Like you're right. doing literally the opposite thing that your body is doing, like your body is pushing toxins out and you're trying to put toxins in. Uh, did you know what was going on or did you just kind of go with the flow? I had no clue, but I'm literally, ironically, terrified of doctors. So, <laughs> I, and the uh, irony of that is, when I initially went to college, I was going to be a doctor, but um, terrified of doctors. So, 
I just waited out. Um, I was like, because this didn't happen before. And honestly, I knew nothing about the detoxing process and all that kind of stuff. So um, I was like, well, it didn't happen before the fast. So let's see what's happening. Okay. By the end of the fast, it was gone. So I was like, okay, well, it must just been, you know, my body pushing something out or whatever the case may be. I had no clue. That's dope, man. So, so how long was your process? So you said you've lost two two hundred and four pounds. What? How long did it take you to lose the bulk of your weight? The bulk of my weight. I started losing weight. Um, I started exercising in April of two. This is two thousand eighteen. April two thousand and sixteen. Okay. Um, so by December of two thousand and sixteen, I had already dropped one hundred and fifteen pounds. Wow. Then, um, by the time June rolled around and of 2017, I had dropped a total of 170 pounds in a matter of about 14 months. Yeah, and that's 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 crazy. And uh, I'm just like people t- like I know with with my brother when we very first started, one of the things that we I was researching was extreme weight loss. Right. And, you know, people would be like, oh, you know, like if you if you lose X amount of pounds in a certain time frame, that's extreme weight loss. That's dangerous. Um, were you ever worried about, you know, how much weight you were losing, how quickly or were you just more or less kind of intoxicated by the, the process and what, what you were seeing, the results you were seeing? I was definitely intoxicated by the process <laughs> and the results. And it was really interesting because when I um started losing you know a lot of weight pretty quickly i would literally go and buy new clothes one weekend like on a friday monday when i would get ready to put that outfit on it was too big wow and it's really like it's weird my mother would be like you just bought that friday i was like i know but now <laughs> it's fat because it's too big it's, <laughs> crazy i was like dropping pant sizes and shirt sizes faster than i could keep up with you know shopping for new clothes so what i ended up um doing was i would buy whatever i was going to buy and then whether it was too big or not i would just wear it i'd be like shoot i just bought this i don't have time to keep running back and forth to the store yeah. and so <laughs> um I would, you know, just wear whatever I need. I just, I would just put it on. I was like, shoot, I just bought this. I'm not going to keep running back and forth. So these people don't think I'm crazy and don't know what I was. <laughs> but like I still, when I was, I started off as at a um, 56. Um, now I was wearing, you know, 56 for a minute. And then I went to the store to get some more clothes because the 56 and the fi- uh, 56 was, you know, kind of, well, it was fitting. So right. it wasn't loosely in the 56. I was in the 56 and getting ready to push to like a 58. Right. Um, so I went to the store and then I was in a 54. So I bought some 54s. By the time that Monday rolled around, I was in a 48. I was like, shoot, what what happened? <laughs> so, and um, that week, you know, I went on with my exercise process and my um, fasting regimen. And you know that Friday, because Fridays were my weigh-in days. That Friday, I was like, okay, so I need to go, you know, see what where my waist is. Um, I was a forty-six. Bought those. By the time Monday came around, I was in a forty-four. I'm like, this cannot be life. Like, <laughs> so I just stopped buying clothes until I got to a thirty-six, and then I was like, okay, well. Um, I'll buy, you know, some stuff because my idea was, you know, I'll stick in the 36 and I'll be fine. But, um, as I, you know, kept working out, I didn't feel like I should be in a 36 physically. I, my, I just was like, I need to lose some more weight. So, um, I started, um, cutting down again. So thankfully right now I'm in a 32, 34, depending on how it's cut. <laughs> Yeah. It's funny because uh, I, I'm sure you. I don't know if you saw uh, Steve when Steve came to visit me. He came. He came in my room with some jeans. I did. did. Did you see that? Like, and he was like, I was like, because I'm looking at the jeans. I'm like, man, them jeans look. They look like they're my size. You know what I'm saying? And I said, Steve, what size jeans are those? He was like, man, these 32s. I'm like, <laughs> what you doing in 32s? Like, I wear 32s. He was like, man, I'm getting up in these. So it's interesting because uh, 
John, I think John, he got down to a 32 as well. It seemed, I don't know, man, something about the 32 waist, maybe that's like closer to the, our natural size. I think I might end up getting smaller. I don't know because um, I lost, when I started doing the liver and gallbladder flushes, I started losing more weight even after, you know, fasting. Oh, you know, wow. fasting, it got me down. I lost, I lost 60 pounds. I gained 10 back. And I stayed there for a long time. Then I started doing them liver and gallbladder flushes and I started losing, I lost that 10 pounds again that I gained back. So um, I'm wondering if, you know, I'm, I'm gonna get down to like a size 30, which would be, I'll be screwed. Cause I don't even think they make clothes for my height and everything. I don't think they make clothes that size. Um, it is definitely fine for sure. Yeah, so I'm, I'm curious like what was your what was your regimen? I know you said the longest fast you did was seven days, but like how often were you fasting? What were your breaks like? Okay, so um, what I would do in the beginning of the week, I would do three days, which was Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. I mean, it just really the flush weight, but at the beginning of the week, I would do three days. The second week, I would do four days. Third week, five days. Fourth week, I would do seven, and then the following month, I would do an intermittent fast. So that was pretty much my regimen as far as, you know, the fasting. And then um, the after the intermittent fasting for the entire month, I would roll around that cycle again. Okay. Pretty much like every, every week of every month, I was doing some type of fasting regimen. Okay. What, right. The, with the consistency is everything. What, right. what, were, you, um, what were you eating? Uh, did, you, did you change your, had you changed your diet yet in between the fasting? Okay, so I didn't, um, I didn't switch to a um, plant-based or vegan diet until April must just be my month, but until April the 20th of last year. Okay. So before then, though, I was eating very clean. Um, only thing I really ate was like leafy greens and baked chicken, grilled chicken, um, turkey, it was um, a lot of seafood for sure, but um, I had cut out beef, I had cut out pork, um, all of that. Um, so by December of 2016, the only meats that I was eating was salmon. Like literally that was the only meat that I ate was salmon. Um, I did have some days where I liked to, you know, eat, you know, weird. M&M's was my favorite snack, M&M's and Oreos. So um, M&M's and Oreos, um, you know, one or two days, and then it was just back to the strictness of the diet. Um, I had really got so intoxicated with it that it was someday I was like, I want these M&Ms and Oreos so bad, but I'm just like, if I get on the scale after eating these and I see that I've gained a few pounds, I'm just gonna <laughs> So, and I just stopped eating um, sweets altogether for that period of time, and it was really, really strict um, to the point of, I didn't attend any family cookouts. I didn't, Thanksgiving was a big no-no for me. Um, so yeah, I had really gotten intoxicated with the process. It was like, if I don't get, it was a pretty much do or die situation for me. Right. Uh, because of my, the consistency that I kept getting of uh, not breathing in my sleep, blood pressure over the roof, um, all of that happened. It was like, if I don't do this, I'm going to die. So I really had to switch my gears mentally and be like, just and do it so right. um, yeah it was just a yeah do or die situation so right. i stripped it up and like literally only ate salmon leafy greens and um brown rice whenever i was eating you no know, carbs okay so so what what was it that um caused you to make the the big jump from you know the standard diet and eating meat to not eating meat anymore like why did you decide to cut all, all your meat out because um, I actually stumbled into the uh, vegan lifestyle, and I'll tell everybody this, I stumbled into the vegan lifestyle because I had reached a plateau in 2017. Um, I stayed at 235, I know, for the entire month of January. And um, I, no matter how hard I worked out, no matter how much food I cut out, 235 was it. Um, 235 um yeah 
I just could not shape that weight. I couldn't go up, couldn't go down, couldn't do nothing, just 235. Yeah. So, I, okay, well, I started researching, you know, um, researching the stuff that I was eating because I did eat a lot of salads and stuff, and I was a cheese addict, so it was, I had a whole, literally a whole bag of cheese in a salad. <laughs> and, <laughs> yeah, when I say cheese added, I was a cheese added, um, and it was, you know, covered in ranch dressing. So then I looked and I was like, okay, let me start researching what I'm eating. Um, I saw the cheese was high in fat and cholesterol and, you know, the ranch dressing that I was getting wasn't too much better. So I stopped eating salads and um, stopped eating cheese and stopped the ranch dressing and all that kind of stuff. And um, then I noticed a change in diet. So then I was like, well, let me go meatless for a while. Um, I started looking at, you know, how, you know, going without meat changes your, your, your body dynamic and how, you know, you can still work out and, you know, be healthy without eating meat. So for probably like a week or so, I was a vegetarian. And then after that, I woke up and I was like, okay, I'm never eating meat again. Um, it had to have been, though, the thing that got me the most was, I think I watched Cowspiracy or something like that. Mm, I can't remember yeah. which one. And after I watched Cowspiracy, um, it, yeah, because What the Health wasn't out by the time, but it was, had to have been Cowspiracy. Um, I was like, okay, this is disgusting. This is gross. And I'm just not going to do it. And so I literally got up the next morning after watching that documentary and cleaned I had like four five hundred dollars worth of groceries in the freezer wow and it went down the drain all of it went in the garbage and um it was interesting because you know my mother came into the refrigerator and was like what did you do but I was like listen <laughs> <laughs> um, I was like as of today this house is going vegan so I will need to go to the grocery store and you know, I it was all kind of stuff because she was still eating um, meat and she was still eating like beef and chicken and all that kind of stuff. All of that stuff went mozzarella sticks. All I mean, all that kind of stuff it went out the it went out to the garbage. And um, so I started. I mean, I blind had no clue of you know I didn't even know about the vegan meats and all that kind of stuff. So I just went and bought a whole bunch of fruit and vegetables um, at the time, you know, tofu all this kind of stuff and just started, you know, cooking it and playing with it and experimenting it, experiment, experimenting with it and um, started eating it. Right. And weight just started coming off like yeah. drastic by that point. So by the time um, I got to like my birthday again last year, I had gotten down to 213 from 235. So it dropped pretty drastic and I was eating a whole lot um, of that because you know stuff is not calorie dense at all so right you eat a lot and still not gain much weight exactly that's huge man because man you know I mean I'm sure you see it I, I get a lot of people talking about you know how meat is healthy and there's all these doc there's doctors out there I know there's one doctor that promotes a meat-based diet like where you eat oh yeah and I'm just like here's the thing uh, the thing that's funny about diets, anything that you do that's better than what you've been doing, you're going to see health benefits. Right. And people think that just because you do something, like, for example, there's a, there's a guy who promotes starch. He's like, yo, starch, potatoes, eat potatoes. And there's all these people that have healed themselves eating potatoes. But what they don't realize is they're just eating a diet that's better than what they've been eating. I mean, the standard American diet is the worst diet you can eat. Exactly. So anything's going to be better than that. Right. You're going to see health benefits. But like you said, you plateaued. I mean, you got to a point where your body was just like, nah, you, I, this cheese is clogging me up. You know what I mean? Or so like for the, for the, I guess the people out there who are worried about plateauing, uh, first of all, when it comes to fasting, it's, it's hard to plateau. I mean, you, you lost quite a bit of weight before that even happened. Right. Uh, but if you're still eating the meats, the dairies, the processed foods and refined sugars, then that may be in your future. Um, and uh, out of out of curiosity, I'm just like, because you mentioned that, you know, you went through the refrigerator and your mom was like, yo, what's, what's going on? 
How oh. did your family react to your your methodology? Like, were they uh, resistant? Did they think you were going to kill yourself? Like, what was that all like? Um, my mother's actually on board. My mother um, is, well, because I'm the only cook in the house, so whatever I cook is what we're going to eat. So <laughs> by default, went vegan, but she's... Um, my mother actually had diabetes, and I'm not saying she's cured, but she no longer has it. Um, we'll leave it at that. She doesn't have high blood pressure anymore either, and she's lost um, a substantial amount of weight herself. Um, but my family, um, <laughs> it's interesting how everybody becomes nutritionist after you know you decide to <laughs> change your diet, <laughs> well, because a lot of the people, a lot of um, the laughter and the jokes of me being fat came from family members. Okay. So the interesting thing about that is when I started, you know, losing weight and everything, I got the, oh, you think you're better than us because you don't eat this and that, that, that. And I was just like, y'all, I just don't care to eat something that's going to end up killing me or giving me cancer or diabetes or high blood pressure, high cholesterol and all those other sicknesses that you get. Right. Um, and just be okay with it. Like nobody stopped me from eating four and five burgers at the cookout or three, four hot dogs at the cookout. But now all of a sudden, because I don't want that, it's a problem. Um, so, and even to this day, you know, I have some family members that's just like, you're just weird and you're going to die and all that kind of stuff. And you're going to be protein deficient. And uh -huh. I was just like, Oh my God. what? Are you? <laughs> so now I have a bunch of certified nutritionists um, now, but and uh, but you know I have some that have embraced it and have asked me you know some questions about you know how to fix vegan dishes and you know what I need to what hey Justin I have this issue what do I need to you know eat for that or you know how do I how do I need to do change my diet to eat you know, I mean to lose this amount of weight or whatever um, and I even have a friend of mine that has um, gone vegan as well not long after I did um, so you know slowly but surely I, I suppose. Yeah. Gathering. Well, I mean, that's typical. Um, people become experts on nutrition. They become experts on human physiology. Uh, that <laughs> It's just amazing. Like you said, they, they don't have a problem with you stuffing Oreos and ice cream down your throat. But as soon right. as you say, oh, you know, I, I'd rather eat an apple or, oh, you're eating rabbit food. I mean, I used to make fun of my friend. Uh, cause he, he's always been like a, a vegetarian. He, uh -huh. he'd either eat like chicken, uh, or he just eat fish, but he always considered himself a vegetarian, which I always thought was confusing. But, <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'd be like, man, you eating that rabbit food again or whatever. And it's like, you know, we make, it's crazy how we, we punish people for wanting to be healthy, living a healthy lifestyle. And, uh, it's just like, I, even now I, I'll go to people's Instagram and, you know, people like to post their food and stuff. And I'm just, like, disgusted. Like, I'm not judging them, but it's just, right. man, I used to eat like that, you know. Right. For a long time on my personal Instagram, I'd leave pictures of food. Like, I used to post pictures just to remind myself of how stupid I was, like how controlled right. and brainwashed I was. Right. Um, not eating meat for me was huge because it, like, I lost a lot of weight in problematic areas. So, you know, areas that I could never get rid of weight, weight started coming off and I just felt better. So it's like now that you're now that you're eating the way you eat and, um, you know, you're, you're incorporating fasting. How would you how do you feel comparatively speaking to, you know, when you were overweight and you were eating the Oreos and eating all the cheese and stuff like what's your what's your life like now? Oh my God, my energy is through the roof for sure. Um, I don't have to take a nap during the day. I don't, I'm not sleepy all the time. I'm not tired all the time. Um, don't fall asleep behind the wheel anymore. Wow. That, yeah. I'll be driving and literally try to figure out how in the world did I make it home because, like, I don't think I remember is getting on the interstate, coming from where I was coming from, and now I'm at home. So it's just, yeah, um, that doesn't happen anymore. Um, I don't have, like, my acne is definitely, because I had acne real bad. Um, my acne has cleared up. Skin is um, still in the process of clearing up. I'm in the middle of a um, uh, herbal phase that I'm trying out different herbs and stuff. Okay. So my 
clearing up very fast. Um, it's not too oily like, because I used to have very oily skin, but then it would be I would have bumps everywhere. Right. Um, I, boils. I used to get boils literally all the time. I had boils. Um, so you know everything is on the up and up. Um, positive, more positivity. Um, I have a different outlook. Um, definitely clarity of mind and thinking. Um, I'm very um, sharp mentally now. Um, knew I can come up with like great ideas. Like my, I don't have brain fog. Right. What I'm trying to say. Um, I don't have brain fog anymore. So, and it's amazing how when you change your diet and change your lifestyle, that all of that stuff goes away. So, I mean, everything is now is definitely on the up and up, um, I'm setting goals for myself and I'm achieving goals, you know, that I set up because of, you know, my planning is different. Um, of course, when you incorporate fasting, you have no, you have a lot of time to do other things. Right. So my planning is definitely, um, one thing that I do when I inquire, when I do my um, fast days, um, I sit down and do plans, do goals, give myself a deadline. Um, a realistic deadline, but not one that's going to have my goals long and drawn out um, and make sure that I, you know, follow my path to reach those goals on those deadlines. Cool. How, how easy or how difficult has it been to maintain? Um, are you still, are you still looking to lose more weight? Uh, I know you, you know, you work out a lot. Like what's your, what's your goals as far as your health goals? I mean, I know, getting, I guess, finishing, clear, clearing up your skin, but are you trying to lose more weight or what's going on? So I'm trying to get between 165 and 175. So I have a few more, oh gosh, I have a few more pounds to lose. <laughs> um, I'm right at, and I weighed myself this morning, 199.3. Okay. I don't have much further to go. But um, 165, 175 is where I... I'm trying to get to. Um, strangely enough, and I think I commented on a video that you did a few, maybe a month or so ago now, where you talked about um, losing focus and all that kind of stuff. And I was like, dog, this is like a big slap in the face to me. I think I commented that on the um, video. I was like, dog, I feel like I just been slapped. But then I thought about it. I was like, <laughs> This is very true because I my original goal was to be 165, 175. I've been working out doing fasting long enough to have reached that goal by now. But because of every time I post pictures of Instagram and I'm showing off my muscles, and I oh they was like oh you're looking. I'm like oh shoot, I think I need to stay this side. <laughs> <laughs> and got intoxicated with the comments and how I look versus yeah. you no know, the health wise. And so I was like oh shoot. I got sidetracked and I need to get back on point. So, um, you know, after that, I definitely, I was like, God, it felt like somebody slapped me and stabbed me at the same time. <laughs> but I mean, it takes that sometimes to get a wake up call. Hey, you, you lost track of your goals. You need to get back on it. So um, that's definitely a thing that I'm working on now. Um, and the interesting thing um, I posted um, a before and after picture on Black Vegan Social. It's a group on Facebook as well. Yeah. And um, somebody sent me, um, she was gracious enough to send me some avocado soap and um, mango oil or something like that for um, my skin. But then after, um, you know, trying that and it worked, but, you know, in researching, I found out that um, that only helps the surface of the problem. But um, the root of the problem is your blood is dirty. You have... Um, dirty blood, parasites, all that kind of stuff. Yeah. So now I'm in the process of, um, like I bought a bunch of herbs and still looking to, you know, get some more stuff for uh, detoxing purposes. But um, I started taking, um, doing burdock root tea and burdock and sarsaparilla root tea. Yeah. Um, within 24 hours, I had a bunch of bumps all over my face. Yeah. Like it's gone. Yeah. Um, and other skin issues I'm trying to, you know, clean up and really get my skin um, the way it needs to be. So that's why I am right now on my health journey. Okay. I mean, I'm just, I'm happy to hear that you're still pushing. Uh, one of the reasons I made that video is because uh, people focus on the weight loss so much. Like, I mean, that's, that's the thing that's in your face. We're, we're, you know, in our society, we're very into aesthetics. 
And I feel like the goal should always be health. So right. you know, people, people, they're like, Chris, you know, you're so small. Like, why are you going to do fasting? What, why are you going to keep doing, you know, like you think you need to lose more weight. You think it's like, it don't have nothing to do with weight loss. Right. Um, it's 100% about my health. And my goal is to get my body as healthy as possible. And then when I, when I feel comfortable with my level of health, then I'll work on the aesthetics. I'll, you know, build muscle back up. I'll build some size back up. And I'll do it using the, the methods that I've learned along the way. And so that's what I encourage people to do. Like, it's okay to get too small uh, because you're not, it's, it's not a health issue. Like, right. no one dies from being too small. We just, we're just taught that, oh, if you're, if you, you know, if you, if, if you're underweight, you're, it's unhealthy. Like, right. I, don't, I don't really know what that means. Right. Um, now, obviously, if you're dealing with anorexia or something, which is like a mental disorder, that's on a different level. But as far as just, oh, you're, you know, you're 50 pounds, like, <laughs> you know how you're morbidly obese. It's like right. for, for every, you know, 50 pounds, you're taking another five, 10 years off your life. I don't know people who are like 50 pounds underweight and who are like, oh, you've taken 50 years off your life. So, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like we have to, we have to like um, just kind of refocus, refocus and, and, and put health first. Let the weight loss be just a, a great bonus of icing on the cake. Right. Um, I will say that for your skin, um, do, do you get sunlight? Oh, yeah. Okay. Um, I used to hate the sun, but now I'm I'm all for it. Matter of fact, I'm going hiking later on this evening. So I can okay. Because because for me personally, getting sunlight, uh, I, the sun actually started detoxing me. Uh, okay. And I did a video talking about you know skin and how how I've like my skin looks extremely good now. You know what I mean? I'm not even <laughs> trying to be conceited. I, like, <laughs> I get compliments on my skin by guys. Like one of my coworkers the other day was like, yo, Chris, your skin is really nice. And it's just like, <clears throat> people are like, man, I could tell you eat healthy. Your skin is nice. You know what I mean? Like your skin is glowing. And uh, it takes time, man. I, it takes time. And I go hard, you know, you know about the sun water. Right. Um, I drink a lot of water. Me and, me and John were drinking, consistently drinking a gallon of water. Uh, uh, probably a year plus, you know what I mean? Outside of our fasting and stuff, we just, we drank a lot of water. Even now I probably still drink a, a three, three quart, um, a three fourths a gallon of water. Okay. Um, you know, and, and, and I'm still playing around with water because water is like everything. So, right. you know, I'm looking at some, some different uh, products and things like that. Just, just seeing how, it, how it changes the water. Uh, I know you had started with the sun water. Have you, have you started with your liver flushes yet? I have not started with my liver flushes yet um, because I was doing the, um, well, I'm actually going to do a detox starting Sunday, tomorrow, um, with, oh God, I think it's black walnut hull and wormwood. Those herbs are supposed to clean out um, parasites um see how that goes and then after that i'm definitely going to do this liver flush i've read the book okay so i have probably read the book within three or four days i'm a nerd <laughs> so <laughs> yeah I, i've read the book and, and got my um took some notes on that so i'm going to be doing that immediately after i do um this deworming thing awesome i'm excited man uh i just got steve doing it um uh, He's got, I think he's prepping for a second flush now. Yeah, uh, I think I, the Patreon account, I'm um, doing a prep for the um, gallbladder flush, liver gallbladder flush. I'm yeah, sure. okay. yeah. So <clears throat> the I know for me, the liver gallbladder flush, even even like with the weight loss, like I mentioned before, you know, to help you get you to, to that goal that you're looking at, Right. Um, the livers is essential because, and one thing that I think a lot of people, they don't realize when you lose weight, you know, um, you're flushing out a lot of toxins, which is great, but there's a lot of stuff that's like, uh, deep seated. It's, it's like, it's, it's built in, it's almost built into your organs and stuff like that. So, 
um, getting the liver vitalized is so crucial because it has the body has a hard time flushing a lot of that stuff out just simply because of the, the chemical makeup of the foods and the products they're they're designed um, with vaccines and stuff you have antigens they're designed to stay in you Correct. so you you gotta you kind of have to give your body an extra little push I'm curious um, what's the longest fast that you've done I know you said seven days with the dry fasting did you do any like long-term water fasting I did a 14-day water fast um, that was probably the hardest thing I've <laughs> Oh my God, I'm just like, just don't give me anything at all. I just rather not take anything. Um, for me, the, because I wasn't used to water fasting, um, it was probably day six before I actually said, okay, Justin, don't give up. <laughs> Honestly, it was it was definitely harder for me for some reason um, because for me with dry fasting, I know I'm not going to eat anything. I'm not, I know I'm not going to drink anything. So I don't even have to, don't even worry about it. But with the water fasting, because of um, I don't know, me drinking water made me hungry. Mm -hmm. I don't know what it was, and it wasn't until like this, like day six or so where I was like. Okay, I'm starting finally starting to you know level out and not getting these extreme hunger pains on a consistent basis. But um, definitely though by day seven it was like a day seven day eight it was like a state of or like a euphoric state where you yeah. just floating along <laughs> and nothing bothers you. You're in a perfect mood. Um, you know your positive vibes are up. Um, yeah. But day 14, I literally could have gone longer by that point. I was like, okay, this is not as bad. But the beginning is, to me, was the toughest because I'd never done, I've never gone that long without eating. So, yeah. yeah. That's, man, that's interesting because, uh, I mean, that, like I said, that lines up exactly with what I've been hearing. Uh, I haven't personally done any dry fasting. But John, he was like, man, you know, honestly, seems like dry fasting is easier than water fasting and, and kind of like for the same reasons that you said it's like i'm not i'm not eating anything i'm not drinking anything right. and <clears throat> we look at water as necessary you know i call it a life fluid uh, right. but by the same token we still have to process water right so there's still processes that have to activate for us to drink water and you're not that doesn't happen with dry fasting right so i'm curious like if you were to, uh, if you were to try to max out on dry fasting versus water fasting, do you think that you'd be able to do water fasting longer? Because, like you said, you did seven days dry fasting. Did you quit just because that's what you decided, you predetermined, or is it because you felt like you were at a point where you had to stop? I felt like I was at a point that I had to stop. Okay. Um, with because it's hard to do dry fasting and, you know, go about your daily life. And um, unfortunately, I haven't um, become a 100% entrepreneur yet. So um, the job that I have, although it's a desk job, a lot of times it requires me to, you know, get up and, you know, go up and do stuff, move stuff around and climb up and down ladders sometimes. So um, seven days was like, if I don't get something in my system by tonight, I'm going to fall out somewhere. Right. Um, and a lot of people recommend anyway that when you're doing, especially dry fasting, that you literally, you know, you sit down, rest, get get somewhere, you know, nice, quiet, cozy, and just, you know, rest for those days. But um, I feel like if, you know, once I become, you know, my own boss and I do another um, long-term dry fast, I can definitely go past seven days because okay. you know, resting. But okay. um, with water fast, um, I didn't necessarily drop any energy like that. Um, it was pretty, I mean, besides the extreme hunger pains in the beginning, it was pretty, you know, smooth sailing. Um, my energy was up. I didn't feel that much weakened. Um, but with the dry fast, yeah, everything happens so fast right by day four i was like um after day four i was like yeah no more gym time for me right yeah, <laughs> yeah. So, so like 
Me personally, I, I don't really recommend people um, when they very first start fasting to, to you know, go to the gym. I think once you're acclimated to it, it's perfectly fine. Uh, just give your body a chance to get past like some of those, some of the harsher detoxing. But right. yeah, it is, it is recommended with, with water fasting or dry fasting that you relax. Just because when you understand what your body is doing, it's, it's working. It's working. Right. Your organs are working and it's, it's flushing and it's healing. And that takes a lot of energy. Right. So, uh, the euphoric feeling that you, that you found uh, on, on water fasting, I call it the Goldilocks zone. Um, that, in my opinion, that's how we should feel all the time. Right. And I think that our bodies are designed to be able to go long periods of time without food, with no problem feeling just like that. Because I got it around, I think it was like day five. Okay. And when I got it, it was like, yo, I'm good. Like, I don't need food. I'm good. Like, I can live like this. I can go play. I can do anything. I'm good. I was like, I, if I feel like this the rest of my fast, I'll stop when I'm ready because I'm good. Right. Now, I noticed that my detox comes in waves. So around day 10 or 12, um, I, got a, I got a big shock. Uh, but I hadn't I hadn't done nearly as much fasting as you have, you've done by the by the time you did your water fasting and that changes things a lot because oh, yeah. the more often you fast uh, and the more detoxified you become the easier fasting becomes you right. know so that there's one big question that I got to ask you um, it's it's probably the most one of the most popular questions is when people lose that much weight, how much loose skin are they dealing with? Um, now, from I know from my brothers who have lost, you know, 100 pounds, 130 pounds, they've had little to no loose skin. And just to clarify, because a lot of people think that we're just like uh, clickbaiting when, when I did my no loose skin video, no loose skin doesn't mean literally like your skin is all tight and cinched up, you know, right. it's like, when you when you go to people's channel on YouTube and they could pull their skin off their stomach and pull it, you know, all the way over, you know what yeah. I mean? But like when you lose two hundred pounds, that's typically what happens, right? Um, so I mean, I don't know if it's a sensitive topic for you, but I'm just curious: is that something that you've experienced, or you know, what's your skin like? So as far as the loose skin goes, it's very minimal um, compared to. Um, some people that I've you know seen on YouTube, I'm like, oh my goodness. Um, I know there's one guy in particular that's on YouTube that had lost a bunch of weight and like he wraps himself up in saran wrap, I'm assuming that's what it is, and like have to wrap his chest up and wrap his arms up and wrap his legs up because everything is so loose. Um, thankfully, my loose skin is very, very minimal and not even noticeable. Wow. Um, that was a big concern of mine, but um, I was just like, you know, at the end of the day, if I do have it, oh well, and if I don't, I'll be very gracious to not have it. <laughs> yeah. um, it's, I mean, very minimum. Um, and there is, I think there is a, a picture that I took on Instagram that showed um, that I have a, a before and an after where like I literally, I have my shirt pulled up and I have on Definitely nothing but my underwear. But <laughs> if you want me to, I could post the picture. Say what now? If you want me to, I could post the picture. Oh sure, you can do that. Um, but yeah, and like everybody's like, where's the loose skin? And a lot of people thought that I had surgery. I'm like, first of all, I'm terrified of doctors. Secondly, um, I don't have you know five to ten thousand dollars just laying around for somebody to tighten up my skin. Right. So, I was like, yeah, I just don't have that much. Now there are there's one spot on my arm, um, right here. That little piece you see. Me oh wow! <laughs> <laughs> um, like one spot on the bottom of my stomach in the front part. Right. That's literally it. From two hundred pounds. Right. That is. That's nothing. <laughs> right. I mean, so, I can do that. <laughs> I mean, so like, literally, that's all I have, um, and I'm just very grateful that it didn't, you know, get any worse. I don't know if 
um, and probably so like the fasting regimen and um, the weightlifting while um, coming down may have had some play into it. I don't know 100% for sure, but, and then it could be genetics. I don't know. Um, Cause on my father's side of the family, um, my father was muscular. He was a bodybuilder. My uncles, um, my father's brothers are bodybuilders. Um, my mother's brother, brother was a bodybuilder. Um, so I don't know if that, if genetics have anything to do with it. My grandfather on both sides were very muscular. So I don't know if genetics may play a part in that. That's, that's dope, man. Uh, I think loose skin, you know, people, people tend to want to find any excuse they can when they, you know, have a big journey ahead of them and they don't right. want to do it. Uh, and so I don't want loose skin to be a distraction for anybody. In my experience, it's just the, the technique. Uh, if you if you use the calories in calories out technique, which really doesn't work, but the people who are able to to like use that extreme diet to lose weight, they tend to have loose skin even if they're in the gym. Right. Whereas people who utilize fasting, which is the most natural way to lose weight, like literally it's the most natural way, they never have to worry about much loose skin, if any at all. Right. So um, that's I mean. So, so far, besides besides people fasting who already had loose skin, I have not seen anybody who's developed a ton of loose skin where you could pull your stomach out in front of you from fasting. Oh. And, I mean, you 200 pounds, no one can dispute that. Right. No one at all. Um, you know, like I said, I've had a lot of people say you had to have had surgery um and even on instagram when i post like before and after pictures sometime i get dms like tell me the truth how did you really do it i'm like i don't know what story you're looking for <laughs> and, and this is just what it is i can't tell you anything differently um but i get a lot of that like how did you really do it what did you eat what did you do like how did you exercise da, da, da. and i'm like dude there's not an easy way out like there's right. no man so you can take, um, I mean, it just do the work. You do the work, it speaks for itself. Um, even, like, I've seen people that have had surgery and still have loose skin. Right. So, I mean, you know, you just, I just rather take my losses with doing it naturally and not being cut and pumped with all of these medicines and all that kind of stuff and just do it the natural way and, you know, work hard at maintaining. Because um, what I've learned is, when you work hard for it, you appreciate it way more. Um, I appreciate my health and weight loss way more now than I would, I believe, if I had gone and had surgery for it because I didn't have to work for it. I didn't have to put in blood, sweat, and tears and right. all that. So um, I definitely appreciate my health more and I'm very conscious about what I put in my body because I had to work hard to get here. And I made a promise to myself that, you know, once I get to where I am, I don't have to ever worry about going back. For one, um, you know, clothes are too expensive. Two, <laughs> <laughs> that's the first thing, clothes are too expensive. Two, I mean, I just put in too much time, work, and effort to, you know, divert back to old habits. Right. That's dope, man. I, I, love, I love what you said because if you get ga gastric bypass, it's like, in a, in a month, you done dropped all this weight and, and you didn't earn it. And, and a lot of those people, man, people end up killing themselves because they continue eating like they were eating before uh, right. or they develop new issues because you can't just go in there and cut the stomach or staple the stomach. You can't do that and expect no negative side effects. Like it's, it's ridiculous. Right. Um, doctors, doctors essentially tend to mutilate the body. You know, exactly. I mean, that's that's what we're doing to it. We're mutilating the body because we don't understand it. And there's such an easy, natural way to do things. And then you got people up here arguing with me about whether fasting is safe or not. Well, is it safe for a doctor to literally cut you open, crack your ribs? You know what I mean? Get in there with some some saws and some blades and cut right. pieces of your body out and then stitch it back together like right. <laughs> and because um, I think society as a whole has been brainwashed for so long that things that make sense doesn't make sense right. and that are just far-fetched and ridiculous 
seems to be the normal thing um, because honestly, anybody will sense knows that it's probably, well, not probably, that it's much better to just fast and eat healthy exercise than it is to go and have somebody cut you, like you said, and use all kind, kinds of, you know, home improvement tools to right. your body right. to, um, you know, make whatever supposedly better. But um, I've known several people that have gone and had the surgery. They end up with mental issues that they didn't have before. Um, they go into they go into psychological breakdowns and all this kind of stuff. End up coming. I know somebody that has committed suicide. Wow. Um, I know a lady um, that doesn't live far from where I am that went and had the surgery and has gained the weight back and literally because everything is you know stitched and tucked and snapped it's like there's no room for the skin to stretch and so the skin is literally the skin is literally breaking apart it's wow um skin is literally breaking apart because of the tightness of how the doctors you know stitched her back together it's, it's just weird wow um, and seeing all of that, I'm like, I'm definitely glad I took the route that I took because there's no way in the world I don't know if I could you know, really deal with that. That's insane. I yeah. never even considered that. Yeah. All right. So on a lighter note, um, are you like a personal trainer now? Like, what do you, like, <laughs> what do you got that's, going on? That's ironic. I'm definitely currently right now, I'll be certified in um, August. So um, I'm currently in the process of being certified in August um, as a personal trainer and vegan nutritionist. Um, a lot of people have told me that I should definitely, you know, cater to people that eat meat. I'm like, well, y'all can train you, but, and I'll give you a meal plan, but right. I'll give you a vegan meal plan and whatever you want to add, every meat you want to add to that, I'll just tell you don't fry it. Right. <laughs> but, um, I'm definitely, I'm going to, you know, stay true to, you know, what I feel is the right thing to do um, with that. And I won't you know, divert from the path that I've chosen because I know it works. And so, yeah, that's why I'm in the process. August, I'll be a certified nutritionist and a certified personal trainer. Cool. Well, congratulations on that, man. I mean, you, you went from being 200 pounds, almost 250 overweight, uh, morbidly obese to now... You know what I mean? Teaching other people how to lose weight, get healthy, and right. do it the right way. So that's a huge 180 and a big kudos to you. And it, sure. I don't, it seems like that's the path when people, because uh, John, John did the same thing. He lost 100 pounds, become uh, a certified personal trainer, and like now helps people lose weight um, right. using healthy methods. So um, I guess if you want to put, put your information out there so that people know, you know, how to find you, contact you, maybe your location. So, you know, maybe, maybe some people out there can be clients because uh, you did this, like, you know what you're talking about and the, the results are duplicatable. So, you know, go ahead, put your information out there. Okay. So you can find me on Facebook, Justin Howell on Facebook, Instagram at Vegan Savage SC, and you can email me also J L Howell. That's H O W E L L at ymail.com. 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 <laughs> In Gmail, no, I meant Ymail. Right. Yeah. When I saw that, I was like, Ymail. I said, I never heard of Ymail before. It's Yahoo, but. You know, oh, it is. Oh, short, like a short. Yeah, they used to let you um, like change the ending of it, like Rocket Mail and all that kind of stuff. So I just chose yeah, Y Mail. Okay, dope. Well, did you have any uh, last final comments, anything that you wanted to say, ask, whatever? I do not. I just, well, I did want to say that um, I definitely have to appreciate you for your efforts. And um, I know now that I'm not like the crazy person in the group um, or the crazy person in the world because, you know, I thought that my methods, I was told that my methods of weight loss was, you know, just crazy. But then after finding, um, you know, you on YouTube, I was like, okay, so, you know, I know I'm not crazy and what I'm doing works. And um, definitely kudos to you and your achievements. And the group is amazing. Um, like, I love, I don't be on the group 
every day all the time but i definitely when i am on facebook and i see like people posting pictures it's just a good positive um environment where you know people are uplifting each other and you know it's very informative and i found out a lot of information you know on the group so i definitely have to appreciate you for that because you know it's it's an amazing thing that you're doing and i definitely you know support it 100 percent I appreciate that. And I'm, I'm happy for you to be a part of it. You know, uh, it's, it's cool because you, you found your, you found your way outside of the group and then you found your way to the group and you were also able to be edified by the group. So that, that that speaks volumes. And, um, you know, I just, I feel like every, every story helps to, you know, confirm and, uh, just, it backs everything up so people are more comfortable with it because there's just there's so many people out there that are just like, oh, that's dangerous. Oh, you're going to kill. You know how many times people told me I was going to kill myself? <laughs> so I, I just, I genuinely appreciate it. Um, like I said, as of right now, you know, you're the you're the biggest loser. So, I, I mean, I think that's an honor. I know it sounds, it just sounds bad. We got to figure out a better way to say that, but... Um, <laughs> I think it's an honor and I, I definitely look forward to seeing, you know, your improvements in the future as you continue your journey. And um, thank you for, you know, always helping. I know I see you on the group helping people, giving advice, posting right. your pictures, stuff like that. I appreciate that. So. Very strange because I'm still getting comments on the picture that I posted earlier last month, I think, um, like last night's um, a guy. And, you know, it's really, I'm not a touchy feely person or not a um, emotional person but it was just like oh my goodness like all these people that are saying thank you this is inspirational you are inspiration um i've never set out to be you know i'm just tr i was set out trying to be healthy but the fact that people are finding me inspirational is just you know the icing on the cake and you know that's really encouraging to help keep me pushing along um a lot of people saying are saying you know that i you know, inspired them but at the end of the day when people are telling me that I'm inspiring them, it's inspiring me to, you know, to keep pushing and going to the next level to never um, get complacent because right. there's always improvement. Yeah, that's how it is, man. Like when you're doing something great, you inspire people. There's really just, it just is what it is. So it's, like a, it's a, yeah, it's a side effect. <laughs> um, shameless plug. Uh, I'm going to be doing these, these group, these, um, interviews on patreon i decided to do the first one on the youtube channel so that you guys get a taste for it and if you're interested in seeing more videos like this make sure to check out the patreon account it's a healthy alternative on patreon and you guys will be able to get a lot more uh, you know other things i've got the mp3s for uh, all of the videos that i've done so if you want to watch the videos or listen to the videos on the go you could do that as well as um, I'll be doing more exclusive interviews with um, John and, and other family members, as well as, you know, you, you'll get updates ahead of time. Um, anything that's going on, events and things like that, you guys will be the first to know and have first dibs on products and, and anything that I've got coming up in the future. So make sure to check out Patreon. Make sure to check out the Facebook group because the Facebook, the Facebook group is huge. If you ever need motivation, uh, if you need encouragement, if you need an accountability partner, uh, every it's like every day somebody's starting to fast. So, yeah, I mean, you can always go on there and find somebody who will fast with you. And that that's huge, uh, having that person that, oh, that's a good question. Did you, did you uh, have anybody that ever did like fasting with you? One man show. Wow. <laughs> no. <laughs> Uh, no, no, I had nothing. I like literally had to develop a strong self will and self motivation um, because yeah. I had nothing. That's why I was saying like the group is amazing because you have all these people here that are that is doing it with you. Like you said, somebody's starting to fast every day, and there was a guy that did a fifty day water fast, and I was like, dude, <laughs> yo, and he amazing, yeah. His transformation is nice. I've yeah. got a 100 day uh, water fasting interview coming up. That will be in the Patreon. Um, that one. It's it's not there yet. I haven't I haven't recorded it yet. He just completed. Group? Huh? He posted on a group. He's he posted in the group. Uh, I don't think he's posted his 100 day update yet. Oh, okay. 
he posted, he was talking about how he was on, I think he was like on eight, day 85 when he posted. Yeah, yeah. It's, so, so that interview is going to be interesting because he will be the first person that I ever talked to who did an extended water fast like that. Um, the longest, the longest water fast that I've seen so far is 40 days. Okay. Uh, but, or well, no, the 50 day is the new one. That's the newest one. Before that, it was 40 days, and now 100 days. So um, that's going to be juicy because we're going to be talking about electrolyte deficiency. We're going to be talking about, um, you know, how he felt. Did he, did he die? <laughs> <laughs> All right. of it. All of the things people claim that's going to happen to you on extended water fasting, we're going to be getting into. That's so I'm really excited for that one. That is a yeah, that's an amazing feat. I I don't know if I have the mental capacity or the willpower to man that one. You got it. You got it. I mean, it's <laughs> trust me, you got it because because um and I'm I'm you know like I said I haven't really got to talk to him in depth yet, but I think after a while it just becomes easy. Right. Yeah, I think it just, you know, you get to a certain amount of days and it's just like, okay, you know, I'm not eating today. I already know that. Right. And not eating tomorrow and not eating for the next two, three months. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm really excited for that one. Um, all right, man, I really appreciate you taking out the time. You know, I know you're busy. You got a lot going on. Shoot, I'm busy too, so I, I understand that. But uh, this was definitely needed, and uh, I hope the people really, you know, get something good out of this. I appreciate that, and I hope they get something good out of it as well. It was a great conversation. Absolutely. Shoot, man, we'll, uh, we'll probably end up doing this again. Uh, in the future, once I, once I get out of my full-time job, I want to start doing some events, so I'll definitely be uh, setting something up, so hopefully we can, you know, see each other in person. And, you okay. Know, all right, guys, so if you like this video, make sure to hit that thumbs up button. And if you want to see more videos like this, make sure to subscribe and check out the Patreon account. And as always, the application of knowledge is power. And I'll see you guys next time.